Hello everyone, Prime here, and I hope you've had a great day. Today we're going to be covering Varifaragna from Iranian, Middle Persian, Old Middle Persian mythologies. Now, Varifaragna as a separate noun, so not associated with the god, means smiting of resistance. And it's not necessarily found in Old Persian. But I mention this because Varifaragna was a god of victory that also bestowed victory to those that followed him. He might have operated similar to how Christianity's Holy Trinity work, having, you know, in that religion, its god also functions with the help of Jesus and the Holy Spirit. There's three versions of god or three forces at work there. Well, in this case, the god Varifragna is a giver of victory, but there's also a second element to him. So that's how it's similar to the Trinity. Or at least that's what some places will tell you. Other places don't seem to necessarily mention this, but they do hint that there's something a bit more to Varifragna than him just being a god. He was a very popular god because of the fact that he bestowed victory. He's also known as Barum or Wararum. You'll find more information on him if you were to search for the name Barum than Varifragna or Waharun. He's a significant figure in Zoroastrian mythology, which works like a lot of current day, modern day religions in that it's monotheistic and the wise lord created the earth. Varifragna, though, is thought to be a warrior god with plenty of epithets associated with him, like strong and endowed with attacking might and most highly armed. He's also something of an unstoppable force capable of breaking through any defense and resisting any offense. He's associated with conquering superiority. Now, these quotes are coming from the Avesta. It's the religious text of the Zoroastrian mythology. Like how the Bible or the Quran or Torah operate in that they're also accompanying texts to the respective religions that they're from. I mentioned that Zoroastrian mythology features, or, you know, it's a monotheistic religion or mythology. And Zaref Ragnar, of course, is a god, but he's not the original creator god. See, some places say that Varifragna indeed wasn't necessarily a god, but an angel. And he was in fact an angel that was able to rise to the rank of Archangel. Not too sure which one is actually false, or if he's somehow both a god and simultaneously an angel at the same time. Or if that's just a funny translation thing, but I'm just going to put that out there. As you can no doubt tell, he was associated with war and conflict. He was always ready for some sort of battle or fight. But that doesn't mean that Barum only offered just military success and military victory in that sense, or just victory in combat. Those that followed Brahm, that worshipped Brahm, that respected Brahm in a particular way, could enjoy victory in thought, victory in word, and victory in action, as well as eloquence in speech. More applicable victory than just giving you added guaranteed winning on the battlefield, which is of course valuable because people don't want to die, and back in those days, war, that's a pretty, you know, it's very dangerous to go to war. Good chance that you will die. So let's say you were having an argument with a partner, for instance, probably going to win that argument with Verifragna's favor. The Avesta also depicts the god or angel in several different forms. Let's just call him a god for the rest of the video, that will make it easier. He's an impetus wind, a golden horned bull, a boar, a white horse with a golden muzzle and ears, a bird of prey, and a young person, probably around the age of 15. There are other forms, but not every place seems to necessarily either mention these other forms of the, of the god, or acknowledge that they even necessarily were attributed to the god, but let's mention them anyway, shall we? A camel in heat, an armed warrior, a ram, and a wild goat. Out of all of the forms, the most popular was the bird of prey. That could have been a falcon or an eagle. He's also known to punish the evils done by man and demons. The 20th day of the month is dedicated to him, and the last thing that we can mention about the god is that he was associated with the planet Mars. And it was his name, Barum, that was usually associated with this planet. And at some point, he and the god Ares were considered to be identical gods. So they came together through the process of syncretism. I'm not sure in which, but one of the mythologies, so either Zoroastrian or Greek mythology, replaced one of these gods of war with the other one. 
though I'm not sure which, whether it was Greek mythology that replaced Ares with Barum, or if it was Zoroastrian that replaced Barum with Ares. That was a video on Verifragna slash Barum. Hope that you did enjoy. If you did, go ahead and leave a like, and it was made possible thanks to the request of this chap. Usually I'd put it at the start of the video, not the end, but I just didn't do it that way around, so I'm sure you'll accept that. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and leave a like, and of course subscribe to the channel for more content just like this, the notification bell just makes that even more sweeter. I'm not sure how much I'm going to keep up this series, it depends on literally how much you guys seem to interact with it and enjoy it, so that's a thing. And until the next video, have a very good day, I am Prime, and I'll see you guys in the next one, bye bye.